What's happening guys, Ola Zandri here bringing you a really hard fought game of TDM today. It's not one of those games which is completely smashy like a 32-0 in 4 minutes or anything like that jazz. This is one where I would lost the previous game and I knew that instead of playing for like kill streaks, instead of playing for the good KD, it was one of those that I had to just get out there, get in people's faces and keep the kills ticking along. And it really actually proves to be a really tight game for most of it. In fact, for most of the game we're actually losing so it's just it's just one of those games that actually feels great to win great to take part in i mean it's great to get those 32 and o's it's great to get the beast kds but sometimes you know it's just great to have that little bit of a challenge and the challenge more or less of this gameplay was my own teammates they were kind of confusing the hell out of me in terms of a map reading sense now map reading is it's kind of one of those things that people think Oh wait a second, if I'm reading the radar, it's for red dots, and I head towards the red dots, and oh wait a second, there was a ghost, grr, I hate ghost, grr, because it wasn't a red dot, and then they get killed. Map reading generally isn't anything about the red dots that appear on your map, there's too many silencers, too many ghost users to ever trust it, but it is a good marker of where people are, I mean you put a motion sensor up like now, you can find out where a lot of people are, of course, the main thing you really need to look at is those green triangles. That is what separates a good player from an average player. Right here, in fact, the green triangles completely and utterly screw me over because they're all heading from one spawn to the other. I think the enemies are one way where they actually just appear behind me from the middle of nowhere. And I was like, what? what's going on? It was one of those games where my teammates just weren't really making any sense with their movement, making any sense with the positions they were taking, therefore I couldn't really make much sense of the game. So yeah, a, quite a few deaths in this game, quite a few deaths, but it's just one of those action-packed ones where I have to get out there and kill as many people as possible. So yeah, good gameplay value I think. Two minutes of introduction there, a little bit about map reading there. But really, map reading is, the essential part of it is those green triangles. A good player won't really pay too much attention to the red dots. I mean, they tell you where people are, like right now I've seen a red dot and this is exactly why I'm going to go kill this guy. But you can never, ever believe them to a certain extent. I mean, there might be red dots that aren't showing up there. So it really is all about those green triangles. Basically, in most games you end up with this kind of paradigm where you end up with like the entire team green triangles in the middle of like a building or something and they're facing across a no man's land to another building full of what should be the enemy so you can always tell roughly position and positionally what spawn the enemy are at what position they're coming from and then you can look for the gaps between like your team's formation and well like the routes that can be taken and basically take that other route stop people just coming around your flank and it really really works out it really helps you pick up kills it helps you just win the game as a team more than it does just following around those red dots just being able to think less on the uh, I have to go there to get a kill more like well there's a gap here if I move up here I might be able to flank because the enemies are completely focused on what should be the front that my team are providing and so therefore I can flank get behind them and get the kills or I can stop someone doing the same thing so map reading is really important. That brings me to what I really want to talk about in this commentary. A couple of uh, videos ago, I got asked why I use UAV that much, counter UAV, and why I completely ditched UAV for it, in fact. Most people think UAV is the good choice out of the two, because of course UAV can tell you where people are, and of course I've already said the red dots cannot be trusted because of the amount of ghost users. Now the reason I use UAV is because it denies that map information that makes the difference between a good player and an average player. It denies the positional awareness of where your teammates are. When a counter UAV comes up, for me, if it ever comes up on me, I am frantic, I'm anxious, I need to know where my teammates are in order to like work out what is going on with the game, what, what kind of state we're in, what kind of... what's the status quo really, uh, where the enemies are, where, where I need to go. It is the defining factor of all those things. So when you take that kind of information away, you take part of the decision making process away, you're left with just a guy running around in the dark. Counter UAV is so much more powerful than UAV because it is a great leveler. All of a sudden, like, ghosts is kind of like irrelevant in a sense because all your team have ghosts. Silences are irrelevant. I mean, if you don't have a silencer, you're not going to show up. It's it's like all these little things rolled into one. There is no negative to using it. Yeah, you don't get the map information, but the map information is there from your teammates' triangles. You don't need the red dots. 
the red dots that appear from people being frantic and getting into gunfights that they didn't realize they were going to walk into because the county UAV is up. They didn't know they were going to walk into where a heavily populated allied area because they couldn't see any red dots appear themselves. It just creates confusion, creates a defensive feeling in the enemy, puts them up instantly on the back foot and allows you and your team to take the aggressive standpoint full on. It allows you to move forward and smash more than a UAV could ever, ever help you. One extra kill for a kill streak that is 10 times more powerful in my opinion. And more to the point, it is as I labelled in the player card video, the good player destroyer. Next to the Blackbird, a counter UAV, because you can get it so easily, is one of those kill streaks that will completely disable a good player who works off a lot of these little intricacies within the game, all the map reading and all that jazz. It really does hamper and handicap someone who is good at the game. It's one of those things you can do to really level out the skill playing field. So yeah, that's been a bit about the counter UAV map reading, all that jazz, a bit of the things I was giving tips and tricks about in that player card video. I'm really glad you enjoyed that. Anyway, this has been Oz Andrew. Please rate, comment, subscribe and all that jazz and I will see you around. Bump on the Respawn app and cheers for watching.